In this video, I'm gonna teach you the exact Friday workout that we do in phase three of the Foundation Movement System program. This is for the hip bend, working towards a deadlift. Now, there's a lot more technical movements in this program. It's starting to get a little bit more complex, so you need to make sure that you stay around to the end of this video so you understand how to do all of these movements properly. All that and more coming up. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. So the first exercise that we're going to be doing is called the back body line and the first two exercises that we do in the program are both for the handstand. The way we work the foundation movement system is we do skill training first before strength training. This comes straight after your warm up. And if you haven't grabbed the uh, mobility mini course, you wanna grab that because that's the full warm up uh, that we recommend doing before these workouts. So for the back body line, Richard is gonna grab onto this dowel rod here and he's going to bring his feet and hands together and lift his shoulders right off the ground so he's really engaging his abs there. And then he's gonna spread his hands and legs apart just so for a lot of you that'll be it. That's gonna be all you can do. And what we're looking for is to make sure that the shoulders don't go down, the abs stay switched on and your lower back is firmly pressed against the ground. Now Richard's uh, very good at this so he can go all the way down and he can still maintain his lower back being firmly on the ground. You can rest now for a second, Richard. Now, the idea of this is to go as low as you can, but you have to be very, very critical of yourself here because the cues, Richard, just go back to the first position again, please. So the, the idea of coming together like this is so that you can feel that your abs are engaged and the lower back pushes firmly on the ground. Now, as you slowly separate your hands and feet apart, this shouldn't change. The lower back should stay firmly on the ground. So you can watch as Richard goes down, he doesn't lose that beautiful, what's called a hollow body with the lower back firmly on the ground, abs engaged, shoulder blades off the ground. So relax now, Richard. And those are the cues that you're looking for. Number one, lower back always firmly on the ground. Number two, feel it in your abs. Now we write in the program up to 60 seconds. That's the goal, not the expectation. Now when I started doing this exercise, and I'd done a lot of core training before this, but when I started doing this, I could barely do it for 20 to 30 seconds, and that was with my hands and legs at an angle like this. Be very critical of yourself. Practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. It's very important that you understand that principle, and that is the back body line. The next one that we're going to do is called the front body line. Now this exercise is, uh, there's a lot more cues to it than the back body line. The back body line was quite simple. There's a lot to this one. Now we're gonna go through it step by step, okay? So the first is, we're gonna squeeze the heels together. The second one is, we're gonna straighten the knees. The third, we're going to tense the bum. Next, we're gonna suck the stomach in. Now, I should definitely be able to get my fingers under Richard's stomach here, okay? You can see there's a gap there where I can get my fingers under his stomach. And then next, the nose is touching the mat. And then the last one, the hands are gonna lift just about one inch off the ground. That's it. That's the front body line there. So again, heels together, bum tense, stomach sucked in, and hands one inch off the ground. He's not lifting his bum off the ground. The hips are pushing into ground and the stomach is suck, sucking in. You can relax now, Richard. So the, we've just done our workout today, so Richard's already a little bit fatigued, so <clears throat> I promised him that I wouldn't make him do this stuff for too long. So uh, the, the cues for this are, what's really, really important is when I say suck your stomach in and tense your bum, I'm basically telling you to do this. It's called a posterior pelvic tilt. Don't make the mistake of lifting your bum off the ground. Push your hips into the ground, tense the bum, and suck the stomach in so that you'd be able to get your fingers under there. Now, when you're learning this, you won't even worry about the hands. The only thing you're gonna think about is from here down to the feet. So feet together, knees straight, bum tense, stomach sucked in, just like what Richard's doing. And only if you can do all of that and hold it for a prolonged period of time, do you then bring your hands about one inch off the ground. And hands should be about shoulder width apart. If your hands were beside you and you raise them like that, that's where they would be, okay? And that is the front body line. Now we're on to the single leg good morning and Richie's gonna get the barbell across his shoulders. And let's do a couple of reps, Richie. So basically it's the same movement as the previous uh, hip bend patterns that you've been doing, but there's no knee bend, okay? So it goes up a bit quicker, down, 
Not, I like saying slow, but under control. Down under control, up with a bit of speed. When you get to the top, you really tense your butt and push the hips forward. So see how he's, he's really emphasizing getting that posterior pelvic tilt at the, at the top. So if you're getting to the top and you're just standing up to here where I am like that, with an anterior pelvic tilt, you're not getting maximum glute activation and that's what we want. So at the top, we're gonna uh, tense the abs and tense the bum. And that action of tensing the abs and tensing the bum pushes us into the posterior pelvic tilt. Let's have a look at a few on the other side. Rich is going as far as his flexibility will allow. He's got great flexibility in his hamstrings. So if you look, he's got a beautiful straight back and that's what we're looking for here. Do a couple of bad reps now, Richie. Okay, it's even hard for him to do it. Yeah, I can see that he's getting a little bit of rounding there. Um, but when you practice the right way to do things, it becomes quite hard to do it the wrong way. But what we're really trying to avoid is, you know, bending like this, where you're rounding at the spine. So you want to be able to, you want to film yourself, you want to stand side onto a mirror and have a look at a couple and make sure that when you bend forward, that you're really bending from the hip like I am here, where your back is in this nice neutral spine, and then when you come to the top, bang, pop the hips in place and tense the glutes. Besides that, it's pretty straightforward. There's not too much to think about with this one. It's a high rep movement, so we're going for the 20 rep range again um, to try and recruit the slow twitch muscle fiber parts of the gluteus medius and the um, gluteals complex so that we're creating um, structural balance. The, we're not looking for uh, speed or power training here. We're looking for um, creating endurance with the stability uh, elements of the glutes. And that is the single leg good morning. We're on to the straddle up now. This is an abdominal exercise for compression and it's really the next step from the tuck up that you did in phase one of the program. Now we put the ab wheel in between these two because it, honestly the jump from the tuck up to the straddle up is massive. It's a really big, um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big change and it takes uh, again, it's a humbling movement. For a lot of people, it's, it's very, very hard and challenging. So what Richard's gonna do, he's gonna set up exactly like he would for a tuck up. So the arms are gonna be above the head. And I'm gonna move back here a little bit because otherwise I'll get kicked in the head. Now, what Richard's gonna do before he even starts is he's gonna point the toes and straighten the knees and tense the quads so that his, from his hip to his feet is completely straight. The movement starts exactly the same as the tuck up, which means that the hands start to move and the shoulders start to come up as the abs tense. And then from there, as the shoulders come up, the legs are gonna come up together. And what happens is, instead of bringing the hands beside the knees when the knees tuck in, he's gonna actually bring the legs outside of the hands and the hands are gonna reach forward and touch the ground. Let's have a look at a couple of reps. Beautiful. Okay, relax now, Richard. So what you can see, or what you might not be able to see, but what I wanna point out to you is, yes, the legs open, but that is not the goal. The goal is not to get the legs out as wide as you can. A lot of people that do really amazing straddle ups, they actually only open their legs to about here and they can do the splits, but all they're going to is there because what the goal is, is to bring the legs as far back this way as you can. We're working towards a V up, and for the V up, your legs are gonna be completely straight and the hands and feet are gonna to come together like that. So um, what you're doing here is the legs are only opening enough that your hands can go in, in between the legs there. And that's really what makes it easier. What makes it easier is that your hands come down and reach forward. If, when you try to keep your hands up like this for a proper V up and with the legs fully extended, it, it just makes that move so much harder. And that is the abdominal straddle up. So Richard's gonna start in a prone position, so laying face down, feet are together. Now let's do the movement, Richard. Awesome, so you can see what he's done there is, he's keeping his feet together, raising them only a few inches off the ground. Richard's actually really going for it here. You don't actually need to raise your legs that high. It's more so about what's going on here. But what he did here was he externally rotated his arms, retracted and depressed his scapula, and then brought his arms around again. Come back down, Richard, and let's have another look at that, please. So if you keep an eye here, you're gonna see the scapula retract and depress, so they pull down and in, and then he keeps it retracted and depressed as the arm comes around, and that's the position that he's gonna hold. So retracted, pulling into the spine, and depressed, pulling down like that. 
And besides that, this is a pretty simple technique. So if you watch Richard do it again, once, the, uh, once he gets into this raised position, it's all just about keeping those shoulders up as high as he can, keeping the arms up as high as he can. You're not trying to lift the legs as high as they can go. As long as the legs are off the ground and the knees are straight and the feet are together, then you're gonna be doing okay there. And that is the arch body hold. All right, now we're on to the lateral band walk, and this is for maximum gluteus medius activation. So from here, Richie's going to just bend down a little bit. He's got the band around his knees, and let's go, Richie. Let's do a couple of reps. So the idea here is you really probably need to face this way. Let's have a look. The idea is that his feet always come back to that position where you feel tension. So you start in a position where you can feel tension in your butt and then you step and then you go back to that position. Don't step like this. Do the, do the wrong step where your feet come too close together. See there, he just loses all tension there and there's no, um, there's no real benefit. So you want to step out so you feel tension and then you just do small steps like what Richie's doing there. And you actually get bonus points for this one if you do this. It's uh, the crab walk. <laughs> This is by far the funniest exercise in the gym, I think, but it's very, very effective. It's really, really good for training the glutes, uh, especially the stabilization part of the, the um, using the gluteus maximus as a stabilization uh, muscle. And that is the lateral band walk. All right, welcome to your phase three progression for the L-sit. This is where it's starting to get pretty challenging now. Rich is gonna demonstrate. Basically, when you do the L-sit, you just need to bring your feet to uh, level with the ground, so parallel with the legs, fully depressing the shoulders with no protraction or retraction. Nothing too complicated about that. Jump off, Richard. Have a look uh, if you go down on the ground. So we'll just get rid of the parallettes. So this is this is obviously what you're aiming for, but this is way harder, uh, and it really depends on the length of your spine versus the length of your arms, how easy this is gonna be. Just turn your hands back so we'll demonstrate it that way. So we wanna get used to having our hands pointing backs because that's gonna progress towards a manner. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful Elsa there. You can see his shoulders are depressed and not protracting too much and not retracting. Yeah. Took him a few wobbles to get right, but you can see he's uh, easily got the strength there to do that. Now, the, the keys with the L-sit really, just, just like the last progressions, it's just about depressing your shoulders and no protraction or retraction. So the only difference here is by having both legs out in front as opposed to the single leg L-sit, there's uh, more leverage, more of a mechanical disadvantage. Now what we're gonna do is teach you how to do compression strength. Compression strength is literally the ability to be able to compress your chest and uh, knees together. And it's critical for a lot of gymnastics work uh, later on. And as we use some of these gymnastics, gymnastics moves like the press to handstand, you're gonna to need to know this. So the first thing we're gonna do is Richard's gonna do a hamstring stretch. So he's gonna pull his toes back and he's gonna grab onto his toes like that. If you wanna increase the stretch, what you can do is actually grab with your hands around the side of the feet, bring the feet together and turn the toes out, pull back as hard as you can. Um, so pull your hands back, Richie, that's it. And yeah, that's getting a wicked hamstring stretch there for Richard. Now if you wanna make it even more intense, Put this down here, and what this does is, now what I want you to do when you grab on, forcefully pull the toes back. As hard as you can, you're feeling that more in the calves now? Yeah, it's full on, that gets in the calves, back of the knees, and the hamstrings. You're gonna hold that for 30 seconds. Once you've finished, you will rest for 10 seconds, and then you're gonna reach forward as far as you can go. As a beginner, you put your hand, fingers on the ground like this, more advanced, you put your palms on the ground, and Richard, just do a couple of reps for us. What he's doing here, just relax now. So you really, you don't have many reps to do with this because of how much it fatigues you. You're trying to tense the quads as hard as you can and then you're not thinking about lifting the toes off the ground. What you're thinking of doing is lifting your knees towards your chest. When you think of lifting your knees to your chest, that's gonna help you to not lean back. If you just think of lifting your toes off the ground, often people lean back, which is what we don't want. So just do a couple more reps, Richie. Knees up to the chest, awesome, okay. And you wanna aim for um, probably 10 reps like that. So what you wanna do is, at this level with the L-sit, you wanna be doing a 50-50 work, uh, work time with the L-sit and the compression strength. So you do one set of L-sit, one set of compression strength, like that for, your, for that part of the workout. And that is the L-sit. 
Now we're on to radial and ulnar deviation. What that refers to is the uh, radius is the, um, the bone at the top and the ulnar is the bone at the bottom of your forearm. There's two bones there. So radial deviation refers to um, holding the stick like this. And what we're gonna do, if you just put your hand under the elbow like that, and that just props it up and then the arm completely relaxes here. From here, I'm gonna grab onto the stick really, really tight and look at my wrist. I'm going to line my wrist up with my forearm like that. That is very important. Do not have your wrist like that. And then from here, we're gonna go down as low as we can go without loosening the grip and then crank it back up. Down as low as I can go without loosening the grip. Okay, so I keep the grip strong and then crank it back up. Down. Crank it back up. You'll notice I'm not bending my elbow and I'm not bending my wrist the way that I described it. Okay? Now, with a dowel rod, the closer your hand is to the center, the easier it is. And then the other one that we're going to do, the ulnar uh, deviation, from here, you can just bring your hand back behind your body and then from here we're just going to come up and then back down. Up and then back down. I find that I'm a lot stronger with the ulnar deviation, so play around with that. If you are stronger with the ulnar deviation, find a way to make it harder. And if you've got a dowel rod that isn't giving you enough resistance, a really good hack for this is to use a broom, because if you use a broom where you've got the head of the broom out there, that adds so much more weight and it makes it a hell of a lot harder. And you can put even put little marks on there of where you're doing it. So, you know, if this week, if my hand's here, I can put a mark here. So then I know next week, maybe I want to try and go a centimetre further away and you can track your progress like that. Um, and if you don't want to ruin your broom or you, or you don't have a broom or you don't want to use one, which to be honest, what I'm about to say is probably going to cost you more money. You can grab a, uh, you know, one of those little weight plates, like we've got weight plates from half kilo up to two and a half kilos in half kilo increments. You could grab a little, maybe a two kilo weight and put it on the end there uh, and use that as well. And that is the radial and ulnar deviation. Now we're on to grip crushing reps and what I've got here is a Captains of Crush grip crusher. Um, these things aren't that cheap in Australia. They're, I think they're about 40 or $50. I'm not sure exactly how much they are in the US. So if you don't want to get one of these, it's totally cool. You can bypass this and you can either just hang from a chin up bar for as long as you possibly can for three sets. That'll also strengthen the grip or you can do the weight plate pinching. Um, but this is a really good exercise and we've included it in here because grip strength is a critical part of overall strength. So all I'm going to do from here is hold it down with my arms straight and I'm basically just going to crush it together. So you can see I'm locking my elbow out straight, crushing it so that it touches together and then opening. Crushing it so it touches and opening. I'm not bending my elbow when I do it, I'm making sure that my arm stays straight. And besides that, the only thing you really need to know is put it up against the heel of your palm and then put it with your fingers here and squeeze it closed. And those are grip crushing reps. that you're trying to do. Make sure, bleh, fuck it, bleh. <laughs> Don't ever make eye contact with anyone whilst you're doing these, especially not somebody that you like. They'll really look at you weirdly. <laughs> so. It's the motherfucking Eagle Double G. Snoop Dogg.